Okay, uh, good afternoon, all my dear students. Uh, just I have to check it out. Is it, uh, my screen is visible to everyone? And am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Only 67 students are present. So, please insist with them. So, uh, dear students, uh, before started my actual topic of today's, just I have to uh, request for Five minutes. So in this uh, in it, you you comfortable, you comfortable. Otherwise you come here. So from the beginning of this in it, uh, we are going to study uh, interrupts chapter, right? So interrupts definitions we studied, introduction part we studied, and uh, two main uh, types of interrupts we studied. That is hardware and software, and along with that. Uh, under the hardware, again, we have studied two main uh, in sub interrupts that is, maskable interrupts and uh, non maskable interrupts. And in the software, uh, we, uh, we have total 256 interrupts. Okay, that one we are going to study later. So, in the maskable and non maskable, whatever we studied that is enable and disable, uh, that is going to be. Uh, we have to handle the interrupt difficulties in the 8086 only. So, and what are the big interrupts uh, condition uh, cases are there? That time, which is not uh, resolved by the 8086. For that, we are going to use one more uh, extra chip in the microprocessor that is 8259. Okay. So, in the 8259, also, we have to study it. That is uh, features of 8259. Clearly, I give it in the notes. And also, uh, the architecture of 8259 we studied. So, in that uh, architecture of 8259, uh, totally uh, eight blocks plus internal bus, nine blocks we have studied. Uh, we have to complete it in the last lecture. So, even though uh, by using 8259 microprocessor chip along with 8086, uh, some of the interrupts also still not resolved. Only uh, in the fraction uh, percentage, still we are not resolved. So for resolved is hundred percent. All the difficulties, all the whatever abnormal conditions we are going to happen in the execution of the program during the major eight six microprocessor to 
coverage of to execute 100% to reach 100% level of execution 100% level of pure output we have to use it again uh, one more that is a257 today whatever we are going to dot on that okay so dear students same way here also on the a257 uh, we have to study some features and architecture architecture means uh, block diagram of a257 we are going to study it. so here i have to made it uh, one of the listed here so as you uh, see on the screen so this is the features of 8259 again along with notes the notes also i have to clearly explain the entire architecture even some uh, better uh, notes also i have to prepare the printed uh, notes so this is uh, present on the screen please you have to check it out so at the beginning i have to make uh, features of 8057 how uh, you studied 8259 features same way uh, we have to look into that first 8257 features so in that it has a input and output overcome devices for the taking input data and going to be extracted whatever the abnormalities are there and it is get resolved for that we have to use four main io devices that one i will explain you in the architecture and this one more main feature is it is supported 16-bit address line that is 16-bit address bus and 14 count bit counters are supporting this previous one that is only four bit counters are supporting but this 82557 that supports 14 bit counter and 16 bit address line in the data bus. That is the main feature. And one more main feature that is uh, it is having a 64 kilobytes, not a bytes. It means 64,000 bytes transferred at a time. So it is having more transferring capacity capable of more transferring capacity that is 64 kb 64000 bytes that is the third main feature and one more uh, fourth one it is having a programmed independent clear output because of it is a having an independency nature and in the fifth main feature of 8257 that is having a very quick very keen read and write transfer uh, and it is very fast the reading and writing is very fast compared to 82599 8086 microprocessor that is very important this is the fifth point so it means that this is a time consuming speed is more reading and writing speed is more in the 8257 and in the sixth main feature that is uh, there is a one mark signal is there that is present here in the architecture i have to mention here here in the one mark is there so this signal is very important but this mark and tc so tc uh means just a second there is a count yes yes please come so that terminal count tc is here and it means that uh tc means it's a terminal count and make it as a mark for the reading and writing that mark and terminal count is not present in your 8059 and 8086 so these two extra features are added and also one more feature there is added adstp that adstp means analog to digital analog to digital signal transmit bits ead stp so these three uh, main features are added in uh, 825557 uh, so that short it is the more popular and one more uh, in the 80 uh, 8257 we need a clock generator that is signal phase clock Actually, 8086, what you studied, you didn't use clock because that clock generator is built in. Internally, it is there. You didn't use externally. 
but due to uh, to maintain the space of the chip here in the e8257 we are going to use clock generator external that's the one feature okay and uh, this e8257 will operate at the frequency range of 250 hertz to 3 megahertz 250 hertz to 3 megahertz but this much frequency range is not there with 8259 and 8086 and the last main feature uh, it operates mainly in two modes that is master mode and slave modes so uh, please can you tell me anyone what is master mode and what is slave mode what is master and slave as you would please what is the meaning of master and what is the meaning of slave so we were you heard uh, i think you studied uh, digital electronics in the, your diploma or uh, in your first semester basic electronics you only studied right so in that you, you studied that flip flops dk flip flops johnson ring counter all you said you may right so in that uh, flip flops you were studied master and slave so please can you tell me anyone what is master and what is slave concept okay students am i audible no all of you yes sir then answer <laughs> okay fine yeah if you don't know let them okay so see master means what and slave means what so it is one to many communication handling one to many so master is one slave or n numbers master is one slave or n numbers for example today i am handling this lecture i am the host of this video audio and video lecture i am the host it means that i am a master and only one controller for example you are using a, a four wheeler a uh, six wheeler vehicle right estibuses <laughs> so in that master is one means what who is a master driver because each and every control of whole vehicle body is under him maybe front go maybe back go maybe turn u turn okay everywhere overtake everything <laughs> so in that how the driver is every control is there in the driver so you assume that the driver is the master and slave means all the passenger who were sitting in that as per according to the driver intention they can move okay it means that here in the video lecturing i have to maintain in this video lecture so i am the master and all you are just listening and if i give an access then only how to interact if i have to make ban then no one is going to enter just just you have to listen isn't it the only control is under me so it means that the device which can control Uh, any printers, any very fail devices, all are become a slave. So, all of you, please be understand what is a master and what is slave. Master means ones who can handle all other things, and the slave means what? These are the one which is under the control of other one. Okay. So here also in the eight two five seven, here also eight two five seven. it is having a more appropriate capacity of master and slave and this l257 is acting as a master acting as a master so if strength is more please you adjust today uh, in next day onwards i will take it in the classroom only better you okay no we i think more are there no you are you, you are the last person okay then then it's fine yes so these are the uh, five seven to eight points are the uh, main features of 8257 that's what by using uh, 
we have to resolve hundred percent in the problems in the eight zero five six. Okay, so this is the main features. So after that, to resolve this one as a uh, architecture of eight to five nine, here also we are going to study architecture of eight to five seven. Here also we are going to study architecture of eight to five seven. So this eight to five seven, we have to say. Uh, DMA. DMA in the sense what? Dynamic memory access. Dynamic memory access. So 8086 is a so 8085 is a static. There's no dynamic. 8086 obeys the dynamic DMA, but not 100 percent By using this 8259 and 8257, the 8086 become a 100 percent DMA. Before Without these two, it is not hundred obeys, but not hundred percent. But eight to five, eight zero five, eight zero eight five, it's a static, not a dynamic. These things you have to remember. So here also, and in this architecture of eight two five seven, here mainly three, uh, uh, sorry, four channels you have to use. All these four channels are same. All these four channels are same. So not only four channels as per requirement. Yeah, sir, please. So, uh, dear all students, just for two minutes, uh, I'll start the lecture. Please, you have to you know. Me.
Okay. Uh, yes, okay, fine. Uh, so, Yes, uh, please, uh, am I audible, right, all of you? Please respond to me, anyone? Am I audible? Yes, sir, audible. Yeah, yeah, please follow for that, uh, because uh, here there's a one small incident for the five minutes. That's fine. Okay, so uh, these are the uh, features, whatever uh, we saw now, that is uh, four channels with the input and output ports, and it is a 14-bit counter with a 16-bit data address, and it is having a capacity of 64 kilobyte data transfer, and also it is a programmed independently. And here, uh, the read and write for this uh, 8257 is very fast compared to 82559 uh, and 8086. And uh, the mark and uh, TC's main two uh, features are added into this. That is a capacity of 128 bytes. And uh, it is using an external, that is a uh, clock generator. That one we have to say single phase clock, clock in the 8257. And here uh, the more frequency range capacities 256 hertz to 3 megahertz. That is 256, uh, 250 hertz to 3 megahertz. And also uh, it is having a two modes that is uh, master mode and slave mode. So master is the one and slave is the many. So the 8257 is having the capacity of to control many uh, slave, many peripheral devices by using one 8257. That is a master and slave mode. So here uh, in the 8257 architecture, these are the many blocks we have to use it. So mainly uh, four channels we are using with the same capacity. All these channel zero. So here uh, the first block channel zero and the second one is channel one and the third one is channel two and uh, channel three. So that is priority resolver. Uh, as you used uh, in the 8259, here also you are using priority uh, resolver. And one here, three blocks we have to use it. So whatever four blocks we are used at the right side, all four blocks are the same. As many as our interrupt task is big, so those many uh, channels we are going to use. It. And all the channels are uh, cascadely we are using. Means that connected serially, one on another. So, and all are controlled to the priority resolver. All are controlled to the priority resolver means which one is going to be get resolved first based on the task of different channels. That is channel zero, channel one, channel two, and channel three. Even channel four, five also, we are going to be using it as per the interrupt task size, okay? So that is data request zero with each channel to uh, data acknowledgement. So data request everywhere, whatever the abnormality is happened, abnormal condition is happened. So what the uh, 8057 will do? First, it will to send the request. It will do send the request. That is nothing but data request and it will get response that is get response in the sense what data acknowledgement that will get data acknowledgement and data request same way same xerox copy of many four three channels channel one channel two channel three all are 16 bit capacity all are controlled with address bus and controller. That is ADR addresses bus and CNTR is controller. Every controller is going to be under the control of priority resolver. So all the controller is going to be connected with priority resolver for all four channels, okay? So this is the right side blocks, that is channel block. So come to the uh, left side, that is data bus buffer. So in this data bus buffer, it is an internal bus. 
as you used uh, internal bus same as in the 8259 here also you have to use it eight to or uh, in the 8257 use the internal bus same functionality same functionality of internal bus as in the 8259 so in the right side uh, blocks in the right side block data bus buffer for the data address corresponding d0 to d7 totally eight data bit lines at data address lines and here one more block that is read and write logic whatever we are going to write the logic programmer by reading or writing and to resolving that is with the address a not to address a three lines totally four lines with the control signals cs as you used previously and here one pin is used for reset and here we are used a clock so in the 8086 the clocks are internally built in right there is no external clock but in the 8257 we are using external clock to here that's the one of the main uh, features and read and write for input and output i o all input and output read and input and output write that is uh, for reading and writing of the logic whatever we are programmed in the 80 8257 and the next block the last block that is control logic and mode uh, self filling so here also we are using again three address lines that is a4 to a7 totally for the 16 bit the address lines are 8 a0 to a3 we are used with read and write logic and the remaining four address lines that is a4 to a7 a4 a5 a6 and a7 we are used with control logic so almost this read write logic and control logic both are having a serial wise with the a0 to a7 address lines and here we are going to use it that is a ready state ready state yes read means what ready to execute once this is uh, that interrupt task is going to be resolved by using resolved by using this uh, internally logic that is going to be ready to send to 8086 at the last with a 100% resolved well by using all these four channels as per priority resolver and hrq means what that is a request head request and it is a hold request and it is a hold acknowledgement hlda means what hold acknowledgement and hold request are going to be resolved in the control logic and remaining that memory read and memory write that is memr and memw read and write and also enable data enable and this is ad stb means analog to digital signal transmit bits and that terminal count tc and that mark one more pins we have to use so this is the main blocks this is the main blocks architecture of 8257 so based on this architecture now we will study one by one each and every pins each and every block we will study so here in the this is the architecture here i given pin uh, description also so this pin description is not there in the notes please if all of you have to take a snapshot or otherwise in the microprocessor uh, our microprocessor group i have to send it this uh, short notes okay so for your uh, reference purpose for this class just we have to take this uh, screenshot 8257 uh, pin configurations on this is also 40 pin 20 pin at the left side and 20 pin at the right side totally 40 pins are there that is 8257 so all uh, each uh, whatever these pins are there and how you are going to connect it with the 8257 so this is the pin description of 8257 isn't it so in that uh, we are using mainly drq node to drq3 so here that is with the first channel drq node second drq1 
DRQ2, DRQ3. Totally, data request is three. Zero to three means four data requests and four data acknowledgements. Data acknowledgement zero, one, two, and data acknowledgement three. So that one we are going to explain now. So at the DRQ means what? Data requests. In this, the individual channel of data the dynamic memory access request, that is inputs, which is used by the peripheral devices by using DMA, dynamic memory access service, when the fixed priority is done with the priority resolver, that is selected by priority resolver. So those are DRQ, data requests, data are DMA request also we have to say, which is having the highest priority. So here at the first one, DRQ0 is the highest priority compared to DRQ3. In the sec last line, I have to mention DRQ0 has the highest priority and DRQ3 has the lowest priority among them based on the priority wise that that channel resolver. So priority resolver is going to be handle the situations that is data requests. So next one, again, as per the four data requests, four data acknowledgements are there. Four data acknowledgements are there. These are the active load dynamic memory access acknowledgement lines. That is dynamic memory acknowledgements, active, are low means high or low based on that. So that DAK is the highest one means high and DAK that is the lowest one means DAC3 is the lowest one and DAC0 uh, is the highest one. So that these lines can be act as a probe lines with the requesting devices. So means what? Just connecting devices and transfer the data based on the priority wise high to low highest is the positive day and lowest that is DAC 0 to DAC 3 DAC means what data acknowledgement and here next one i'll move to d0 to d7 here in the architecture we have to use it data bus buffer in this block that d0 to d7 totally eight data buses we are using d0 d1 d2 up to d7 so in that means what is the purpose there it is a data bus means what it's a bi-directional one and in that uh, it is act as a master and the slave so in the slave mode in the slave mode means what uh, one which can connect it to many with the peripheral devices that is in the slave mode it carries the command words that is 8257 and the status of this word is master. Status of this word is master. So the 8257 acts as a master while sending the data, all the information from one to many means master to slave conditions. That one is going to be used here. And this is helpful for ADSTB. What is ADSTB? analog to digital signal transfer bits so it is converts high signal to low signals with the understandable of 8257 isn't it and uh, next pin is ior and iow input and output read input and output write these two pins are we are connected here that is iowr and IOW, uh, IOR and IOW at the block of read and write logic. Okay. So, what is the main functioning of this uh, input and output read? That the uh, active device with a low bi directional tri state input line, which is used by the CPU to read internal registers of 8257 and in the slave mode. Okay. And the master mode, in the master mode, uh, it is used to read the data from the peripheral devices during memory write cycle. One is with them, it is acts as a uh, slave at the reading and acts as a master at the writing. That is the main functionality of this input and output read. 
same way in the input and output that is the 8 bit uh, mode registered to 16 bit dma address access it will help so that 8 bit is 8 bit is for reading and writing and that uh, 16 bit is for dynamic memory access that is controlled by the pin number of iow input and output right uh, pin okay so next one i'll go for clock and reset as per the architecture next is clock and reset pins so these clock and reset pins what it will do the reset uh, the reset pin so here uh, in this the reset pin signal is used to reset the dma control by disabling all the dma access channels it is just going, going to be resetted just is going to be anything is going to be happened again you have to how uh, your mobile you are going to switch off and switch on no if it is going to spread or if it is slow down in on and off state so like that you are resetting so here this pins is act like that to resetting the channels and the clock means what at the uh, in the blocks i already said that the clock is externally we have to use it that is for the clock generator and this clock what it will do it is to regulate the signals while converting analog to digital or high to low signal that clock is very important that is going to be regulate the signals that is going to be regulate the signal so this is the things of uh, that 8057 uh, architecture that entire blocks and this remaining is same as in your what you use of that 8259 okay so this is and just uh, for a minute again uh, okay just a minute i'll show you one more Uh, actually, my PC is uh, very slow down. Yeah. Is it open? Uh, I'll check it out. Okay, uh, anyhow, so dear all students, uh, this is the things about uh, 8257. So at the end of this, uh, the summary, I will tell you about 8257. So the 8257 is nothing but it is only one or two percent useful in uh, to resolving interrupts problems. So whatever the drawbacks of 8086 to resolve the interrupts we are using 8259 and that 8259 uh, chip is uh, not 100 percent so for that again uh, we are using 8257 so because the 8257 they are added they are implemented some extra features into 8257 and they are get resolved 100 uh, percent execution of the interrupts we will get the correct outputs okay so this is all about uh 8257 so you just go through my notes also so in my notes and uh, this table is uh no not necessary so just i have to put it out okay just a second mm. yeah okay so this is the features of 8257 i have to mention here so just you, whatever I explained in that notes, you have to go through it. Same way, uh, this is the block diagram, architecture of 8257, that you have to go. And all the explanations, whatever I explained now, all explanations I have to give on you, address register, the terminal counter, and uh, mode of set register. So this is description status register, all I given here, just you have to go through it, okay? So whatever I explain. So this is all about your uh, unit number five. So now I will go to the syllabus. So here in the syllabus, 
uh, okay we will go to the syllabus just we will look into that Yes, fine. So now I am opening the syllabus. So just I have to uh, present you how much I have to cover. So dear all students, almost uh, you are half of the semester is over. I think more than half of the semester is over. So uh, we have to conduct one lab test. For I have to yeah. Yes, fine. This is the see. Uh, we are with the interrupts unit number five. So in the unit number five, all of you have to check it out, whatever I have to cover. So introduction I covered and types of interrupts I covered, maskable and non-maskable. And interrupts and interrupt service routine, ISR I covered. And next, <coughs> maskable and non-maskable interrupts I covered. And uh, Programmable interrupt control that is 8259. I covered that features block diagram architecture and internal operations of 8259. We covered, and after that, today uh, I covered features on block diagram of DMA uh, control 8257 that is features and block diagram and operating modes of each blocks of 8257. So by today, I have to cover all your uh, topics of unit number five. It means that up to today's class, five uh, units we have to cover, okay? So actually this um, unit is only for six hours. This unit is only for six hours, but I think I took again nine hours, okay? So for slowdown, because still we have a lot of time, uh, we are going slow, so. I took nine hours for this in the number five. So dear students and only remaining, uh, <clears throat> that is three units are remaining. All these three units are very small units. So only four hours, four hours, and the unit number eight is the five hours. So dear all students, what I will do, only for the four hours is more than enough to cover this levels because only a two to one topic is there that is 8255. So that programmable peripheral interface 8255 and operation mode of 8255. You are not need of four hours. Only one topic is here that is 8255. So one week I cover this unit number six, very smallest unit, entire out of uh, eight units. This is the very smallest one I have to cover within one week. And uh, this unit number seven also again four hours. Again, this one also I have to cover only uh, one week. That is also more, four hours is more than enough. In that also only two topics eight zero eight seven and NDP data types of eight zero eight seven. And at the unit number last again I will take one more week. So very small units these are uh, six seven and eight units. Actually, this is the eight, unit number eight. It is a print mistake. It is the was copy. So these three units, one one uh, week for each unit. One unit for one week. Within three weeks, I have to cover uh, all your hundred percent syllabus. So almost we are in the first week, and uh, within three weeks means up to uh, January twenty two twenty five. We have to cover all 100% theory part. Along with that, along with that, come to the lab programs. So here, one to eight programs, except the seventh program, block transfer. Except seventh program, it means that totally uh, seven programs we have to cover till now. Totally seven programs we have to cover. So it means that in the practical session, more than half a portion, half syllabus we are covered. For that, uh, I have to conduct one test. That uh, lab test should be I conducted on Wednesday. Coming Wednesday, the date is 5, 5th of 
January 2022. Please, all of you make a note. Even I'll send you a message also today. Uh, on the 5th, uh, I got lecture at 3.30 to 4.30 for your section, regular section, okay? So, uh, on the date 5, means Wednesday, day after tomorrow, I have to conduct one lab test. Out of these seven programs, any one program I will assign you. Remaining, dear students, uh, this block transfer and uh, the program number 10 to display the string and the, to find the largest number, program number 7, 9, 10. All these, again, uh, within one week, I have to cover. And these two programs are we have to do on the kit. That kit, I have to put it at the last. Once we have to complete all 100% theory part and one to 10 program, after that, uh, one or two labs, I have to complete this one also. So as per my uh, schedule, I have to cover 100% syllabus up to January 25. So after January 25, I have to make you for revision lecture, assignment lecture, test lecture, okay? So many revisions I will do you, uh, I will carry. In that time, whatever doubtful things are there, I will show you my three of doubts I told me, of this time may uh, discuss kar sakta hai. Still, you have two months time, okay? Don't worry. Uh, we are on an average to cover the syllabus. And uh, today, what I will do? So before going to next unit, before going to next unit, next unit, uh, we, will, uh, we will carry in the next lecture. Means, uh, okay, whatever we are getting in the next lecture, okay? So, dear students, what I will do? As per uh, exam point of view and as per interview, uh, interview point of view, this interrupt chapter is very, very important because each and every abnormal conditions, difficulties during the execution of program, you are going to handle by using this unit only. That is the topic of interrupts. So the interrupt topic is very, very important. So what I will do, whatever, uh, Okay, before that, I will share these notes. Before that, all of you come to a uh, microprocessor group. So in that group, that today's topic, I will uh, send you. Anyhow, all of you with the notes, you have well defined of my notes. And today's whatever uh, I used that text to explain and pin the configuration of 8257, I will, I will send you in the WhatsApp group. Uh, just a minute. It's loading. Okay, fine. Uh, please let me know any questions. Okay, there's a problem. Yes. So here's. Okay, uh, anyhow, there is a problem with the network, I think. I will send you later that. Uh, okay.
okay all of you check it out uh, 80 that microprocessor go in that i have to send that notes so dear all students what i will do uh, i have uh, before starting it was 16th 16th i'll start in uh, next lecture we will not we have a lot of time we don't hurry up okay so this one hour so now it is 115 i'll give you two assignment question uh, just i'll give you two assignment question please all of you go through it okay so today's assignment uh that is two questions i'll give you uh, just to both of it because this uh, inter period is very very important that is uh, assignment on today is third zero one two zero two two please all of you take this assignment question one briefly explain the features features in architecture of 8259 first question how to make it as okay so second assignment question with the need briefly explain the architecture of 8 to 59 same way so here also explain 8 to 57 so dear all students what you will do take this today's assignment these two questions still you have one hour time uh 30 minute for one question because the question answer is too big okay question answer is too big so that's what i'll give you 30 minute for one question use my notes and you have to practice it okay this one hour don't waste the time you have to practice it after that uh, in the next lecture we have to uh, we have to cover the we have to start unit number 6 okay so i will take uh, attendance here just i'll take attendance here uh, sorry uh, i i'll take attendance at 2 a uh, 10 pm okay at two over 10 minutes i have to take attendance all of you go through this assignment and send to uh, send to that to my mail id okay so my mail id is at uh, c o e dot sphere dot ac dot in okay so at 2 o'clock or 2:15 you have to send me this assignment to my mail id so here
okay so please yeah you have to carry at the 2 10 2 o'clock 10 hour i have to take your attendance
Thank you.